So what's going on guys, DIY Dan here again, and this is another episode of Outdoor Living. In this video, I'm gonna go over the install of a rotisserie kit that I put on my Charbroil commercial infrared grill. I'm also gonna go over another rotisserie kit that was given to us, and I ended up modifying that kit to make it work on my Weber Genesis grill. Now I had looked into buying the actual Weber rotisserie kit, but it was over $130, which is what led me to make the modifications to the one that was given to us to make it work. And I'm gonna give you a quick overview of those modifications and how I made it work. And then at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you the first three chickens that we actually cooked on the rotisserie. So I cooked two of these chickens on my Weber grill and then one on the charbroil. So it's kind of gonna be a comparison of those two grills with doing the rotisserie. I'm also gonna go over helpful tips that we learned because this was our first couple times doing this along with mistakes we made. So if you decide to get a rotisserie and try it out, you don't have the same issues that we did. I actually wish we would have gotten a rotisserie kit a lot sooner than what we did. I found this the easiest way to cook a full chicken and have it stay nice and juicy on the inside and a nice crispy skin on the outside. So let's get to it. So I ended up going to Lowe's and I purchased this Charbroil Universal Rotisserie Kit. I believe I paid just under $50 for this kit. I removed the upper rack of the grill. It basically just lifts up and off. I started by putting the bracket that holds the electric motor in place on the grill. Now these brackets do have a universal bolt pattern to fit a variety of grills. Obviously mine bolted right up because it is a charbroil. I tightened them by hand and lifted them up where the bracket that holds the rotisserie bar in place was just barely above the frame of the grill and tightened it down. I slid the motor down in place and then went ahead and put the bar into the motor and checked my clearances to make sure nothing was going to hit the lid while it was in operation. If you are rubbing, those holes are slotted so you would just loosen that bracket up a little bit, adjust it where it needs to be and tighten it back down. I loosened the bolt by hand on one of the collars and then slid that over the bar and put it into place on the one side of the bracket. My guess is the collar's purpose is to help make sure that the bar does not walk out of the electric motor. The round collar fits into a half moon space on the bracket to create a nice smooth surface for the rotisserie to go around on. I went ahead and slid both of the forks onto the bar and then slid the other collar into place. Then I grabbed the other bracket and slid it under the collar and put the two nuts and bolts to hold it in place and tighten those down by hand. I verified that my rotisserie bar was sitting pretty level across the grill and then I went ahead and tightened those down using a screwdriver and a wrench. Then I checked my clearances one more time with everything in place to make sure the lid was closing correctly and nothing was hitting. After verifying that, I went ahead and plugged it in and then turned it on to make sure nothing looked like it was dragging or binding up in any way. So because this charbroil kit is made for a universal application, they make the bolts that hold the brackets in place really long. So there's a lot of thread sticking out past the nut on the inside of the grill. That absolutely would drive me nuts. So I took my grinder with a cutoff wheel and after tightening those down, I went in and cut those extra threads off. So here's a look at the final install, guys. The electric motor just slides down in place on the one bracket. Then position the collar where it's in that half moon part of the bracket. You also want to put it and lock it down in place so the bar cannot slide out of the electric motor. The lock bolts on the collar should be to the inside of the grill. So as you set the lid down, those don't have a chance of hitting the lid as it's rotating. So I had bought that charbroil kit originally to put on my Weber grill. However, the bar was not long enough. Now it does come with a bracket where it just sits on one of the grates in order to hold it. However, I didn't feel that was gonna be strong enough. I just didn't like the idea of that. My Weber Genesis also only has two grates, so I was worried about a big chicken being able to fit with pulling just the one grate off and it not being centered in the grill. That platform also did not sit correctly and nice and flat on the grates on the Weber. Now I could have flipped those grates over, but I like the grates this way and I didn't feel like doing that either. We were given another rotisserie kit and I had to modify that one quite a bit to make it work on my Weber. I had to grind down the bar in two places because the slots for the rotisserie in the Weber grill are much smaller than that of the charbroil. And that all has to do with the quality of the Weber grill compared to the charbroil. If you want to see more on that, I'll post that video at the end of this one. You can click on it to check it out. I did have to drill two holes in my Weber grill in order to mount the mounting bracket for the motor. 
I also ended up grinding off the top of the bracket because the only way to put the rod in the motor was in from the side instead of being able to have the motor hooked to the rod and drop it in from the top. So I have cooked two chickens on this rotisserie using this setup and we haven't had a problem. So now I'm gonna go over some of the things we learned while cooking with the rotisserie for the first couple times. I've done a total of three rotisserie chickens so far. I've done two on the Weber and one on the Charbroil. So if you're subscribed to my channel or you've watched some of my previous videos, I always tell you the dumb things I do, so hopefully you guys don't make those same mistakes. We did not have any cooking twine at the time of trying our first chicken, so we actually just used some string that I had. So we tied it up with that, then I went ahead and did a dry run. As you can see, we're having several problems here. One is we didn't tie the legs tight enough, so they flopped down. So I tried using the fork to help hold the legs. On this chicken, it was pretty big and that didn't work, so then we tried retying it with the string. The other problem we were having is that we were trying to use a drip pan underneath it and this was a really big chicken and it just didn't end up working out. It didn't take very long with the string I was using for that to go ahead and break and then our legs popped down again and the drip pan was getting pushed around. We ended up just canceling the drip pan altogether and cooking it without. We had tried resituating the chicken and moving it around a little bit. Make sure you use a pair of pliers in order to do anything with that rotisserie after you've been cooking on it so you don't burn yourself. So this was our first chicken that we ever did on a rotisserie and we did it on the Weber. So because this was my first time cooking a rotisserie chicken, I did go online and do some research. What I found was that you should cook it at 300 degrees and for every pound the chicken weighs, it should take about a half an hour. So for a four pound chicken, it should take roughly two hours to cook which is about what I had this one on for. I do think it took us a little longer because it was my first time and I kept opening the lid to keep an eye on it. And that's actually the worst thing to do because every time you open that lid, you're losing a lot of heat and it has to warm up again. Now I did use like three different thermometers to make sure we had this cooked enough, uh, but the end result came out really good. It was a really juicy and tasty chicken. So now we're gonna go over the first cook I did on the charbroil as far as the rotisserie goes. So learning from my previous mistakes that we made with our first chicken on the Weber, I was able to correct a couple things when cooking this one on the charbroil. The first thing that I did differently, when positioning the forks, I made sure they were over the top of each one of the back legs so that would keep those held in tight. After putting the chicken in place and centering it in the grill, once again, this chicken was so big that I could not use a drip pan because the chicken would hit those drip pans while it rotated. I did plug it in and do a dry run. Once I thought everything was good, I went ahead and turned on the propane tank and started up the grill. And once again, we did have a few problems. One was I did not tighten up the lock bolts for the forks tight enough by hand. So I did have to get my pliers and then tighten those up. The other thing is we were dumb enough to go ahead and try and use string again to hold the wings and that broke almost immediately. So then we ended up just grabbing some wooden toothpicks and held the wings in with those and that worked just fine. With the way I positioned the fork on the back of the bird, it held the back legs perfectly and I never had to worry about those coming loose. So one thing I will say, it was much easier to determine and maintain the temperature on the Weber grill versus the charboil. The main reason for this is the temperature gauge on the Weber is up in the lid, heat rises, and therefore gives you a very accurate reading when using the rotisserie. On this infrared charbroil, the temperature gauges are down basically where the burners are at. So I was running this grill on high and you can see the temperature gauge is below 300. Now that just wasn't accurate, I think, because of the placement of the actual temperature gauges. The other thing with the charbroil is you'll notice here how many spots there is for heat to escape out of this grill. In comparison to the Weber, which just has one slit out the back, there is also a huge difference in the thickness of the bowl and lid on the Weber in comparison to the charbroil as well. These couple things I pointed out make the Weber a much more thermally efficient grill and made it so I could run the burners much lower than I could on the charbroil to maintain the same temperature. I even got to the point when cooking with the Weber that I would shut one of the burners off to maintain that 300 degrees, whereas with the charbroil, I had to have both burners pretty much on medium to high the entire time. Now the chicken that came off of the charbroil was a little bit more crispier, and that's just because we let it run a little bit longer than we did on the Weber, but that wasn't the grill's fault, that was my inexperience with doing the rotisserie. 
So also doing some research, it says that you should be getting up to a minimum of 180 degrees for a rotisserie chicken for it to be fully cooked. Once we achieved that temperature, I went ahead and shut the rotisserie off, shut the burners down, and lifted the chicken off of the grill. One other little side note, guys, is make sure you use oven mitts or at least a pair of pliers or tongs to handle anything on this rotisserie. The entire bar and everything gets very hot and it will burn you. So this was our second attempt at using the rotisserie and it came out very juicy inside but was a little bit crispier on the outside and that was us cooking it a little longer than we did originally on the Weber. The third time we went ahead and went back to the Weber and we did cook it a little bit longer and we had a nice crispy skin on the outside and nice and juicy on the inside. So that's gonna wrap it up for this video, guys. I actually think that cooking a rotisserie chicken on the grill is about the simplest way, bulletproof way, to cook a full chicken and have it come out nice and juicy on the inside and nice and crispy skin on the outside. If you did enjoy this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. The whole concept of my channel is to give you guys the most information in the least amount of time as possible so I don't waste your time and I hope to see you next time. Have a good one. Later.